Okay. So where we left left off yesterday of, of, of me not understanding why I'm up here, um, we'll start to talk about what does this start to look like in the kernel and how we have have common implementations and, and, and especially common user space ABIs, even if some of those ABIs need to convey some vendor specific things. I, I wanna preface this by saying that um, uh, yesterday we had we had S390 present first, and they they're not TDIS, but they but they have a, a full firmware interface a, for, a full firmware interface in front of all of this. Uh, Greg came up to me after the after the session or today and, and said that S390 thing looks looks really nice, and it it, it the, the blood drained out of my face because <laughs> because what what I was talking about yesterday was uh, so to put it, to put it, put it plainly. Um, Intel started with exposing like this much complexity to Linux. AMD started here, and my proposal was like, "Hey, uh, let's let's try to bring the Intel complexity down to match AMD. And if we find any other vendors that's above that kind of line, let's bring them down to that. And, and if we actually find somebody even lower, we'd, we'd move everybody, try to move everybody down. But so far, I haven't found that. Um, what Greg was saying is like, if you guys." To me, my interpretation was: if you guys don't get your act together and don't uh, work together, I'm going to force you to go all the way down and put it like beneath an EFI level thing. So I, I, I think it behooves us to say like, no, no, we're like we we know how to handle this this uh, vendor differentiation. We don't need to do the nuclear option of taking all of it away from Linux. So that's the, the these are these are the stakes here. If we if we start to bother other parts of the kernel with with too much change, like they may just be like, hey. Uh, blow it all up and, and come back when you can push it all the way down into firmware. Um, I don't know if I have a, if people online can see the pointer. They can. Okay. Uh, so there's, I mean, there's there's so much to talk about. Um, for some reason, I, I get the mic, so I, I think I'm going I'm to pick <laughs> pick what I want to talk about. But feel free to interject at at any point. Um, to me. We have so in this in this box inside the guest, I have this thing called the the GHCX layer. The idea here is that this is the common Linux wrapper and entry point into all the different vendor guest to host interfaces. Uh, and that is and so Intel calls it one of us. Well, AMD and Intel call it GCI and GCB. So that's that's where GHCX came from, and then Risk Five went in. Threw all away all the letters and called it the Cove Cove ABI. But anyway, Co Cove and G and all the G GACs would be in in this box. This other thing uh, was probably the first discussion point is a Linux native guest to host interface. And so, what is this for? The, one of the one of the things one of the use cases that people bring up is like, hey, I might want to bind late, or I might. It, and when I hear the the bind late thing, I think of I think of error recovery. In every in all three of the so let, let's limit our discussion today to, to risk drive AMD and Intel. If that's okay because those are the only ones I kind of can can kind of uh, point to the objects that all three of those put the binding operation as a host operation. If the endpoint device arrives in the guest either not already bound or if it falls out of uh, uh, falls out of run state into the into the air state. It seems like Linux is going to need a way. So those two scenarios, either it's not bound or it's an air state. We need a way to get it to convert it back in. And to me, that seems like a interface for the guest to ask the host to please re please rebind. Um, and if we generically need that for all the all the implementations, we my proposal is that we don't have. Intel go do an extension, Risk go do an extension, and AMD go do an extension. What do we think of that? Should, do we do we need a, a, a common ghost sales interface for those kind of across vendor common operations? Or did I lose everybody already? <laughs> well, actually, I think you're asking the wrong question if you okay. want to persuade them. The right question is, what would be the reason we would need them to be different across all of the vendors? And if the answer comes back, we can't think of anything, then do it this way. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can't, I, so if, if the interface to the TSM is the bind verb, I can't think of any reason why, why the Linux tunnel to that thing couldn't be common. Because we're going to have this uh, over here, the second bullet here, these, this common set of verbs across 
like th this, this would be the driver interface. There's probably there's lots of details behind those APIs. Like, um, I'm not sh like, I think Intel requires a different number of resources to do a connection than maybe AMD does. Like we might need to, Hey, uh, Hey TSM, here, here's your, here's your pool of pages to do, to do this operation. Go ahead. So one thing to also think about is in the Sev TIO architecture, there are some things that cannot actually be done by the Linux kernel. They can only be done by the SVSM in VMPL zero. So there are going to be some operations that actually need an SVSM call, which there's a protocol for that we, that we publish, but it's not actually going to go to the, to the hypervisor immediately. It has to first go through the, the SVSM. Uh, that includes some things around the, the configuration of the device, like assigning what, um, what, what DMA it can do, things like that. Um, so yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't been assuming that SVSM was a, or a required part of these verbs. It's not a required part, but okay. it's a possibility that it exists. In which yeah. case I'm just saying that, that that call is going to have to go to the SVSM before it goes to the hypervisor. But, but I would expect that would, that would be invisible to the, to Linux, right? Like the, the SPSM is basically the the L2 or the the most nested one is is just calling up and whether the SPSM intercepts it or not. It's it's not fully invisible, right? It's it's like a hyper call. Okay. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to ask the hypervisor to run the VMPL zero portion of the guest okay. in order to accomplish that. Is is that something that can be hidden in your driver that's that the that basically is, is doing that translation. Uh, Sean has a question. Uh, Hairbrain idea. Can you guys switch directly from VMPL3 to VMPL0? By the time this lands, could you land in hardware? Darn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I guess what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get to today is what do what what do what do we want our in kernel abstraction layer to look like, and and who who's sitting behind that, and and, and what are the parameters, and I, I kind of want to be inspired by IOM and UFD, which which I need to look more into, but in terms of having generic IOM and UFD objects and operations with hardware vendor specific attributes and things that can come along for the ride. Yeah, I mean we do that kind of today with like page state change, right? When you do a set memory, there's where we populate the x86 platform guest, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. um, so if you were to kind of create a couple of callbacks there, right, then each vendor as the system's coming up, if it's a, you know, SEV, they populate theirs, you have one common call that gets into there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, right. so I'm not hearing any disqualifying things that would that would make SVM being in the path a problem or not. All right, but, but I, I reserve the right to <laughs> change my mind. <laughs> um, okay, so if if we're, if we're proposing if we're supposing that we need some kind of a common Linux guest to host interface thing, one of the topics that came up in in Jason's talk was. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm missing the piece about how we do a, a common enumeration of device abilities in the guest. And uh, we have this kind of common problem of, oh, we could, just, we could define our own config space and do our own thing, but we, we, don't, we can't be guaranteed to have uh, uh, free, config, free config space in the virtual function to use it to define our special thing. Uh, so I had initially thought about it like, mimicking how ACPI has companion devices, we would have a, uh, a companion secure IO, uh, uh, almost looks like firmware in the guest that's, that's doing that extra enumeration for you. Um, but if we can get it into config space, that's probably easier because Sean was saying, it's not, it's not great to go down the paravert path. So if we can get things in the standards, it's easier. So if we have a standard way to communicate to a guest like this, 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 is, this device has these capabilities for, for SPDM IDE, uh, TDIS, um, uh, and and Elena's had had a had a request also to if that if we had the interface we could also add 
is this device supposed to be here in the first place? Which is a just a, a manifest that can be passed in that's consulted over this interface. Like before you even before you even try to do the the complicated TSM association thing, is is, is this is this should this be, device be filtered in the first place? But so barring barring somebody saying no, we shouldn't do that. Um, I'm thinking that we need this. But go ahead. For for discovering SPDM, oh, sorry. For discovering SPDM, TDSP, and IDE, this is I mean. That's if if that's what we need to discover, it's basically that's specified. Already. That's specified only on the physical function. Like there's no there's no standard for like how you tell a get like when the, when this device shows up in the guest, how does the guest know that? But the the, the guest the guest shouldn't know that it that it's going to do that it has to do a, a SPDM or IDE. This is this is TSM specific. The guest doesn't care if it's SPDM or I, the guest actually will talk to the TSM to make sure that ID is established. Right, right. That, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it's, it's, not, it's not that the guest is going to set up ID. The guest is asking, is it already set up? Yeah, but it's, that's the, it's uh, the, like the info uh, verb that, that you have there. It's not a verb. But, uh, so it's so, basically so, so, the guest getting information about the, the device that is trying to, to verify or test and asking the TSM, is, have you established an ID uh, uh, link? Mm -hmm. And you trust the TSM for establishing this link. Well, so, but like we would be asking info on, like, we run, take an example, we run info, info on every single virtual PCI device we see in the guest and yeah. to see if the TSM says, yeah, I know about this. Yeah, no, I don't know about this. I think that's that's the idea. Yeah. You want okay. to, you want to get information, trusted information. Okay. Because if you, if you, if you get information from your PCI config space, this is all emulated by the VMM. So it's not trusted. Right. Right. No, it's not trusted. Right. So it's the only trusted piece of information that you can get is from from the TSM. Right. Oh. oh. And for trusted devices, that's true. So what about if you want to add some virtual devices or something else or something which doesn't support the stuff? So this was more my angle. So that we want to also be able to say that okay, we might decide. <coughs> sorry, we might decide to support some other devices which are not trusted to your devices, but not all the devices. Like. Like, like the think, 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 think of the the case of of uh, of you, 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 you don't need to go as far as a, as a compromise CA, but like let's say somebody plugs in a, a fully functional device that's just not supposed to be there. Like, uh, you, you don't want the you don't want the guest to even try to you, you may not want the guest to even try to enumerate it if if you, if somebody can if if the host can tell you that that wasn't something I put there, but. Um, yeah. The host puts it there. Right, right, right. I think it's fine if if you have the host filtering because basically if the host is filtering, it's just removing devices. It's like a denial of service yeah. attack, yeah, which okay. is out of scope from my point of view. Okay. So the, the threat here is not not about the you know. We, we are afraid of the host, and, and when we are afraid of the drivers which will start to run and the guests which are not prepared to handle it. That's what TD should say. Right, but, but for that, if you only can say that you only support in your configuration trusted IO devices, then you're good. But like. You only, you only so, so if you only say that for, okay, for my VMs, I only support trusted IO devices, then yeah. you're good. But I think, we are, I think, I think adding, adding support for virtual devices. In my opinion, this is all scope for, for, for what we put. This is a completely different. Okay. No, no, I, I'm saying this is for, for not, not for trusted devices. So. Yeah. Trusted devices. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll focus on trusted devices. I, but the, I think, I think, the, I think the, um, the question for me, though, is, is e so it, it's either uh, guest asks the host via the TSM verb info about everything it sees. And the, and the guests and the and if you, go, you get no response, then the TSM like I, that wasn't I didn't put that there. Okay, okay. Or, or I didn't I couldn't establish an IDE session. I couldn't set IUP. Or I couldn't establish an IDE session. So yeah, whatever we want, but it's it's not trusted. Okay, so but the, but then how do we invoke info on in PCI discovery? So like so like when, with ACP, ACP companion devices, you do you do the PCI enumeration. You look and see, hey firmware, did you publish? Any second information, I, I go call the other thing. Oh, so, so where's where the what? The, the ACPI device coming from? Well, no. So, so the, I'm saying that's how that's how ACPI device is. The look aside lookup in something else. 
an enlightened an enlightened guest that's trying to do secure devices would call something to to oh. to, to, to oh, run mean, info. You would have a set of ACPI tables saying those are the devices that I, I'm supposed to know Either about. Either ACPI or it could be a bird IO yeah. thing or or well and when I say bird IO like the, it, 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 this generic Linux guest the host thing is is I'm worried it's also going to be something that each VM is going to want to implement different. Like you're going to get a Vertio thing on KVM and a it, Hyper V thing. It doesn't. It doesn't hit the the, the VMM. The info is sta info stays between the guest and and the TSM. It never reaches the VMM. It, right. No. But like how? Do, but I'm I'm, I'm I'm like something more basic. Like what from the PCI numeration code? What is it calling to get into this regime of 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 sending a guest to host communication request? That's... <clears throat> so, I mean, I think it's, from a security standpoint, I think it's reasonable for the host to explain what devices are available, right. whether they are trusted devices or not trusted devices, whether they're already bound, that kind of information. Right. The guest does have to verify that when it talks with info and buy it and, and the other similar kinds of verbs that it's, it's going to be doing from its side to get the attestation report from TSM. But I think it's reasonable for the host to provide some manifest that's easy to get and it's early, you know, in, in the enumeration process. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So so I guess what, what I'm hearing is is the guest is going to load. It's going it's going to guest is going to detect somehow. I I'm a TDS guest. I'm a I'm a sub guest or I'm a I'm a cope guest, and and it's going to um, uh, call an entry an in, info entry point that's routed to to that guest to host interface back end and it's, and 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 you and you're saying that this should this should be something that each vendor implements not something that linux does generically to think, ask the question i think the verb should be generic and should be it should be a, a generic abi provided by the linux kernel okay uh or implemented in the linux kernel internally and have a specific hooks for it's basically an hyper call between the guest and the tsm yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. So, uh, so yeah, for each and every vendor, we'll translate that into its own hypercall. But the the internal implementation, I mean, you would have a common impl implementation within the kernel and or as the kernel. Yeah, right. And then have specific hooks per vendor because you're going to have different hypercalls anyway. Right. Different DSM implementation. Yeah. So, so, but you're saying that the, the, it goes, it goes from, it goes vendor specific inside the guest. It doesn't go vendor specific after it crosses over into the host. Exactly. Inside the guest, it, 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 inside the, the, the kernel, it, there's a part that's going to be non vendor specific and the part that actually translates right. your info request but into the, a, a vendor specific hyper call. Exactly yeah. As you're showing it, right? In the picture, you have the DHCX and yeah. the Linux Yeah. But I, but, I, but the, when, I, when I hear Samuel saying, I, I think he's saying that there's a vendor, we're only going over the, all of this is going, this yeah, path is always. It's an IP, it's an IP, I mean, even. It's good parallel for Linux. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You would have like a. Or so it, it, it would be horrible. So it, 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 basically, this box doesn't exist. It's only it's only this thing and this thing. Correct. Okay. Yes. Um, info info should be something so, that each okay. and every vendor is free to implement the way it wants. Okay. What about so? What about this? That, that, that makes sense. I can't I can't I can't live think of a way. Not uh, that's that's not bad. Yeah. You know, well in the probe call. Mike, you sorry. Sorry. <laughs> You talked about exactly where you should hook this call mm -hmm. in the PCI probing infrastructure. Right. Why should the info call be even that late? It could be very early in the boot sequence. I want to know. Well, you know. PC, I mean, PCI probe is really early. Okay. Well, I mean, the, the info call. I mean. Yeah, no, yeah. So, but the info, the info is like the host put a virtual PCI device in my topology. The first time I see it, I'm going to ask info about it. Okay. Um, Okay, so so okay, so so that so numeration, no. What, what I'm thinking, I'm thinking, no. Throw that away. The what about this question of how do we trigger operate trigger operations that are only run by the host? Like, so if we want to trigger, if guest wants to trigger bind, mm -hmm. with no, that host host triggers bind. Yeah. The guest is asking, like, imagine imagine we bound we bound the device and it, it fell out and we have an error state. Would would we just the one option is kill the kill the yes, TVM. Yes, it's not going to trigger bind. It's going to ask the host to bind. Oh, to rebind, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, rebind. Yeah, think 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 about rebind. Okay. okay. Um, 
And and the, yeah, rebind or post bind. Like the, but the guess is not going to trigger bind if it doesn't even know about the device. Yet. I mean, correct. Yeah, correct. So rebind or post bind. Right, are. right. So we we got our info. We know this device. Our TSM knows about it. Um, and then info says this device has doesn't have a SPDM session. Doesn't have IDE set up. What do we what do we do? Do we ask AMD Intel and Risk Five to give us a rebind verb through their through their path, or do we have Linux go through its own hypercall into into uh, whatever is? You were saying that we, that we can we don't need KVM to terminate uh, calls that uh, that the guest can has its own way to do IOM IOM operations without needing a KVM operation. Am I mixing? Am I crossing the streams? There, there are endless ways to like basically exit from the guest into the VMM. There's some that end in KVM. There's some that end up in QMU. Okay. There's some that end up here, there, and everywhere. You know, pick your poison. You can pick okay, what you pick. Good, 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 good poison. Um, okay, pick poison. So, don't get so fixated on like okay. honestly, KVM should not be touching anything to do with PCI. That's okay. outside its remit. That belongs either in VFIO or IOMMU. Period. Okay. Okay. Right. So when you're talking about all these things, like you you need a hypercall at some point to to get the TDIS locked. Mm -hmm. That has to be done by the VMM, as far as I know. Right. The VMM has to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so and, and so triggering that we we pick our poison and a non a non KVM way to trigger that. And on the rebind, uh, you need to get info first again. So if you unbind for some error state, basically, mm -hmm. you want to get again the new measurement. You know whether like. Is it a fatal error? Is it like something you can recover from? Right. And before I rebind, I want to make sure that you know the device is still in an okay state for me to rebind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, I mean, the, the error recovery is going to be a, a very negotiated thing with with uh, with device drivers and things. Uh, one of the one of the things that made me cry was like, there's no way to inject AR errors into. K well, there's there's an AR injection thing, and 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 QMU just says to do inject errors into guess. <laughs> 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 Good catch. So we had a long talk about that in a certain working group about how AR relates to like the world and the feeling, there's certainly a strong feeling that AR is really only about the, should really only be about the physical layer. Like, oh, I had a, you know, a, a CFC error on my PCI link or my PCI link went sideways or something. And okay. then more functional levels, things should be maybe a different thing. The, the problem for me though is that ID like IDE is a is a link state, and so and um, and if that link state changes, how do we notify the guest? I mean, it, it actually are, are TDS errors signaled via just MS? Like how are TDS errors signaled? They're not signaled. Yeah, we just can the guest do anything? Like if if the guest can't do anything reasonable to recover from any of these errors. Don't tell the guest. Seriously, just shoot it. Well, yeah. So, so, yeah. I mean, like V one. I think we should shoot it. Uh, I, like, unless you have a concrete use case where you can recover from it, just shoot the guest, okay. shed a tear, and move on. Because no customer is going to be like, "Oh, I'm going to keep going without my nick." <laughs> <laughs> we did this for unexpected memory, right? Like, yeah. if you run in there and the guest gets a VE for it, right? But it can't do anything. All I can do is say, "Host, please help." And the host already screwed it over, so there's no even, there's okay. no effort. Okay, let's let's, let's let's let, let's shoot it until until somebody tells us otherwise. I agree with doing that for V1, but I think going forward we may have to look at recovering. Well, okay. from we'll, 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 we'll circle back to V2. Two real tears on on a host. <laughs> we lose the neck. We do recover. Um, so there's no actual reason you can't do it. It's more complicated, so don't do it first. Well, so my, my understanding of error handling is, is we're going to have some vendor driver who's going to be like, oh, we detected the, cause the error state, and we want to come back somehow. And, we, and we'll tell them to send, send us patches. Even if you can come back, though, do you need to tell, does the guest need to do anything? The guest, the guest needs to rebind the device. The That's the... Yeah. the guest needs to tell, I, I don't want... Well, well, the, the, but we, we yes. but this is the real world. Like, I, I was going to say, like, we all have RAS things in our enterprise drivers. Like, right. in our NIC driver, if something goes wonky in the firmware, we do a complicated sequence where we FLR the device and we start it back up again and blah, blah, blah. Right. So you would want to keep well, that well, ability. Yeah. Well, well, and so I think for, for the core kernel side, we're going to have a way for drivers to say, please try to rebind. 
because that'll be part of somebody's complicated error flow. Right. But, I mean, all, all I was going to say is that from, from my understanding of the error handling, the only way you can get the TDI out of the disp error is unbinded. You have to do the teardown flow, which then necessarily requires you to do a rebind. You may not want to rebind for every case, yeah. but there may be cases you where you do. Unbind. You have to unbind. That's the only way you can... You can yeah, the only, the only, <laughs> it's the host responsibility to unbind. So the guest will basically tell the host, right. move this thing out of error state. Yes, right. That's yes. it. Yes. That's it. That's it. Yes. Guest initiated. It, not initiated. Asking the host, uh, telling the host, uh, please unbind this thing. I'm okay, okay. Yeah. Throw, throw back. But 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 the guest the guest wouldn't say unbind right it would just go to tedious error state it wouldn't the guest would never that's have to where do anything. I'm still lost if it's just a request to the host right. why would the host not just unbind I may have spent way too much time talking with folks about this one but there are some errors that are only going to be detected by the host. There are some that the guest may detect. More often than not, if you see it in the TDSP error state, you want to unbind it as the host. You do not want to wait for the guest to make that request. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Well, so let's, but we're, we, I think we all agree that um, this is going to be a B2 thing. Another, <laughs> an, <laughs> another, another, another taste thing while we have pe people in the room is, is, Circling back to the, these TSMs are restricted execution environments. So it's, it's either tiny PSPs or TDX modules that are trying to reduce the amount of code that runs in them and non-interruptible and blah, 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 blah. One of the ways they uh, survive that world is by asking for help from the VMM. One thing that's common across, uh, and I think Samuel said risk of the same thing, is they need the VMM to, to do the config cycles, to do the SPDM stuff so the actual SPDM protocol is running in the tsm but then the tsm request service from the vmm say please send this opaque blob of stuff to this spdm endpoint and take that blob to get back and give it back to me but the kernel has no idea what's going on because it's all encrypted with the key that the only tsm sees uh so that's the first kind of concession that every every vendor needs the vmm to make is please let us put a dispatcher somewhere in the vmm that's doing this service in theory, in TDS, but it could be out of band. Does anyone care? So you could be talking directly from your TSM to the devices to set all of this up via I, MGTP or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't think you have to use the SPDM dispatcher. Like I, I think if, if I think if you have a capable TSM that can do it behind the scenes, then great. Yeah, I, I was going to say the canonical oh. model is to go through the host because you don't. I mean, as much as possible. The TSMs really just enforce the secu security invariance. They don't try to do any resource management. Okay. So anything you do in sideband is a bad idea okay, from so, a host management perspective. Okay. So, so, so our, our, our common language is that SPDM yes. is a resource that we don't want that we don't want TSMs to be in control of. Which is that uh, it is possible that you could uh, talk to the TSM and it has no SPDM work for you to do. And that is totally legal, right? Right. So it, it, it may need those SPDM resources, but not always. OK. That's OK. OK. The, the, this, this, this is where I, I, I get to have a, because I got the mic, I can have a Intel-specific um, re request. But the patch is going to come out anyway, so it's not, like, I, can't, I can't hide this forever. So in, in, inside, inside the TSM on Intel, there's a TDX module that's tiny and small, and they're like, yay, it's tiny and small. And then TX Connect, TS Connect came around, it's like, oh, we gotta do much more stuff, and we don't wanna blow up the TDX module. Where, where can we put this code that still needs to run in a trusted context, but not inside this TDX module? This is where we get a, a helper, a special helper uh, TVM, TD, that TX module knows about, and they have a communication path to say, hey, um, Hey, T hey, TPA, it's called the TPA. Hey, TPA, I need help. Uh, for, so that's so similar to how TSM module says, VMM, I need you to do the SPDM resources. This other, this would, this is, hey, uh, TPA, I need, I need some service here. So the request here is that we'd also have a command disp. Like, this is a command dispatcher, but this is really just dispatching commands that 
the TPA needs to do. So this is like the TPA uh, is going to control resources that are not SPDM uh, that are talking to the, um, I do not know. <laughs> I, do not, I do not know. The T is probably trust something. Um, but uh, but the person writing the TPA TD is, a, so is the same person that uh, the, is G. Wen, um, who's helping on, on, on the risk five side. That TPA is written in Rust, so if that helps people tolerate this thing a bit more. Um, <laughs> it's, it's secure. Um, yeah, so, so, yeah, so, the, so barring anybody saying, uh, probably not gonna get uh, much pushback in this room, we, we would also have a command dispatcher in this, but this might be just shuffling TPA requests and 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 calling TDX module, uh, uh, but but nobody else really has to worry about that. Okay, what else do we have in here? So the other, this is I think this is this is kind of relevant for the authentication discussion we had before, and this is this is where it's good to have uh, people with different viewpoints so we can we can we can bash it out. I I, I really I really like and respect all the stuff that Lucas did. And uh, we, but we also want to talk about what are we what are we doing with where IDE is managed? One of the details I've noticed that sets Intel platforms apart that I think gives maybe gives false hope about the ability of native Linux to handle IDE is that Intel lets you opt the root port uh, key programming out of TSM control and into uh, into a native protocol described by a really hairy ACPI table. Talking to AMD and RISC-V, they don't allow that. The only way to program root port IDE keys is to go through the is to go through the TSM interface. And for me, when you think when you think about it, if if it's at the platform level, that's effectively a TSM, that's a, that's a firmware interface. Yes, ACPI describing it lets you write native code, but it's still it's still a platform specific solution. Um, but so where I'm going with this is the idea that at least at least in the near term, to get stuff upstream, that we're not also that we're not going to try to have parallel discussions about where to put IDE key management in the native case versus just saying for v1 maybe v2 we could we could we could have a native ide key manager stack but for v1 ide key management is always behind the tsm interface on, on all platforms um i'm not seeing any head shake oh wait we got one <laughs> i think the, the key thing here is the ide is relevant to embedded use cases no one surfaced yet but there may be systems that don't have a tsm that do care about IDE programming and they will expose it via something vaguely normal. Okay. So some register write, or they'll run a whole SPDM session down to the root port and do it that way. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that we would never, that we, yeah. the Linux would never support it. it, it, it it's, it's more like, like for people like, for people like Bjorn, uh, who are watching this wave of patches that are upcoming, do we want to have to him to have to review the IDE key management? They have key management protocol with, versus the because. We, we, we still need to touch PCI in this for resource management. Ask a stupid question. Go ahead. The SPDM people. Okay. Why do we have to care about the keys? I thought you said this was modeled on TLS. When I do TLS, all I care about are the certificates that do the keys. The keys are all managed at the lower level. Why do we need to bother? You want to do it? Take this. So. Oh, um, we get, do, we, do we have? Go ahead online. Yeah. Look, oh, Lucas, so, uh, Lucas. right. So, um, so I, I'm not sure if I understood the question correctly, but for IDE, you because it's uh, symmetric encryption, you have to uh, program the same set of keys uh, no. both into the into the root I, port so, and in no, the, I, into I, the I, end I, point. That's right? that's not that's not the, the point. I mean, TLS at base is a symmetric encrypted protocol. It's usually AES. But what happens so what is you have certificates on either end that mm -hmm. are, are authentication. And once you've authenticated, the two ends of the link just do Diffie-Hellman ephemeral and establish the session key for themselves yeah. for the that encryption. Happens in, that happens in SPDM. That happens in SPDM, but when you don't run that traffic, you don't run your data for SPDM later. And that's the difference here. So they're establishing the PCI encryption keys 
I mean, the ID encryption keys for running the data with SPDM stasis control channel. Yeah, and that's why you do do you do the essentially Diffie Hellman exchange where you generate a session key, you have protected session on SPDM from there on, but it's not used for actual data transfer. Yeah, I, so I understand why you're doing it. I just don't understand why you can't do it automatically. I mean, I don't know if I oh yeah, you might. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, it boils down to the fact that there's no standard for how to get it into the various pieces of hardware. <laughs> Imdef hosts, which, which is pretty much why we're here today. Is like every every host came up with their own different ways to do it. Um, okay, but so uh, I saw a lot of head nodding there. Moving through these things. So, go ahead. Can you just close off on the IDE but no TDS case? As a, I IDE think, but no TDS. Yeah, go ahead. I don't think we're we're saying we don't want to do it. We just yeah, yeah, yeah. once we have hardware yeah, that uh, yes, <laughs> but give us give us hardware. Well, I mean, but also, I mean, no, no, he wasn't, he wasn't saying IDE with no TDS, he's saying IDE with no TSM. We, we've also got the mess here of, oh, come on, they're called, uh, selective IDE, which you typically be using for this stuff, and link IDE, which is where you potentially are programming between a switch and a device, and it goes nowhere near the host. That's all well-defined in PCI. So you sit there, if you're going, from the, say you've got a switch and the downstream ports are exposed on a socket on the side of your server, and getting wired out to somewhere else. That the encryption of that link is purely fully defined CMA. Set up the keys, exchange them, everything that, clear it, of the stuff. That's it, in it, would, it would be very nice if the uh, embedded people that decided they wanted to do IDE uh, did some kind of proprietary thing to to have it like like James said, just have it already set up for the root ports and only have to do the the, the link IDE at the end. That'd be great. For this stuff, you only care about selective IDE, which means that the root port is always the relevant one anyway, because yeah. you're going all the way through the switches. But there's a perfectly good use case for whatever the other one's called. Is it link ID? Yeah, link, link, link ID is a point to point one, right? Yeah. And so the point to point one has lots of use cases too, um, but they're very, very different. But that stuff is absolutely standards defined. Okay. Um, and we can we can add it trivially. Okay. Um, not sure how I'm doing a time. That's what James. Okay, okay. Uh, well, they'll, they'll come in in a sec if they're yeah. <laughs> So, so let's 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 try to try to have a conversation about this complicated box, the IOMMU box. Uh, I like up up until up until Jason was like, please do not put stuff in KVM. Please put stuff, um, yeah, directly into the IOMMU, IOMMU drivers. I want to have a conversation about what does that, uh, what does that look like? So, like in terms of what you what you would want, to, what you'd want to see, Jason, in in IOMMU drivers that we would that these verbs be routed through um, uh, something in each, each vendor each vendor's IOMMU driver would would have their TSM call in there. Um, so my understanding is still pretty basic of all this stuff. So okay, I'll just. Preface with that. Okay. Preface with that and maybe elucidate a bit about my feelings. So my understanding is that when you you, you take effectively a RID, a PCI RID, a, a, um, a routing ID, and you give it to the TCM and you say maybe connect, or I forget what word we were using, and then eventually you say locked. and Or bind, yeah. No, I mean locked. Locked means it's... Uh, it's bind is the verb that translates to TDIS locked. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. <laughs> so it becomes, but as part of this, all the models that I've heard of have the TSM take control of at least some of the IOMU hardware associated with that RID, right? And that's where I come from. Like, so if the IOMMU hardware is behaving differently, then the IOMMU driver should be aware that the hardware is behaving differently. Otherwise, you're opening yourself up to a huge mess, right? So when you enable the possibility for it to behave differently, that should go through the IOMMU driver to take note of it. And the IOMMU driver should have a way to undo it and regain full control of the hardware uh, later when it's appropriate. Does that, does anybody, am I wrong? <laughs> yeah. My, the way I remind it is like the IOMMU has a shadow page table that is under the control of the TSM. And so as long as. Or shared APT or RMP, <laughs> something or other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. 
So, so as long as what you do inside the MMU match what what that table the, is telling you, you're good. So if if somebody screw up, you screw up or like you know have bug somewhere, you go to the error state, and then you have to redo the whole dance. I mean, it's a broader sense, like, let's say your VMM crashes, like forget about error states and things, your VMM crashed. I'm starting, you know, the kernel's randomly closing file descriptors. How do I, how do I sequence that explosive deconstruction in a way that I get back to a consistent state, right? The IOMU driver is the one that knows exactly when it regains control of the device and it should regain full control of the RID, not partial control and wait for KVM to finish whatever it was doing in its explosive deconstruction. Right. That I think is really important because if you don't do that, you're going to have a locking nightmare that's going to never be correct. So in in the uh, the TIO solution, um, the way we've planned it is that if something like that happened, you would back out of that that you know that bound state by unbinding, and that unbinding command would go clear like the red tables that contain that kind of stuff. So if the IMU driver can be Either aware of it or trigger it, you know, whatever. That that would be that would be, I think, what you're, what you're looking for for us. So are, are we kind of re resolving around like uh, unbind should be an, a verb that IOMU drivers call, and probably, probably, probably uh, bind as well. Uh, if you want to have any chance of this, you can't go through the via the TSM. If if you're in a crash state and something's wonky. All of these things route through KVM to get into the TSM. KVM is controlling that transfer point. What? Yes. Yeah. TDX, you, you want to talk to the TSM? You're going through KVM. SMP, you want to talk to anything guest related? Not PSP so much. You're going through KVM. I don't know about Cove. Same for Cove. Android ARM, probably similar. Actually, okay, yes, ARM is the similar thing because it's a it's not a world switch, but it's a realm change. So to get into the secure state, you have to transition the CPU physically into a secure state, which because KVM is the one. So like with TDX, the way it works is uh, it is <laughs> it is a it's going through virtualization transitions to get from root untrusted mode to root C mode, which is the trusted mode. And you could probably actually teach IOMMU how to do that, but the complication there is you have to be post VMX on because it's a VM exit technically to get from root untrusted <laughs> to root C mode. Intel does that, it's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's there's wild complications around that. Like, I, I mean, the way this works outside of IO is that you can completely recover if your TSM goes down outside of IO, you can completely recover all of your memory, which is except for a few things that you gifted to the TSM, knowing that you would never get them back, but those are small chunks, but any memory that you would assign to the guest, you can get back. At least on TDX, SMP is a little bit different and they all have different flavors. Recovery on this stuff is right. sketchy. Yes. <laughs> But the hardware goes into a special mode. I mean, that's that's the other thing here is that like loading the TSM module takes the hardware into a special mode that doesn't act like it did before. And the VMX on thing doesn't happen until we've taken it into the special mode. Like the TX module has to be loaded. And at that point, the hardware isn't the hardware anymore. It's behaving goofy. Like it there's things that you've lost control of. Like MSRs yeah. get locked down. No. I mean, you've changed fundamentally some aspects, but like the difference is memory that you've given to the guest for TDX model, you've encrypted with some goofy keys, you can't access those. If the guest goes down or the TSM goes down, the host can recover all that memory by sanitizing the keys that are used and the encryption crap and it's gone, the TSM dies, but you can do all the other things you were doing in a slightly different state. You can turn off VMX, you can completely unload KVM if you wanted to, like 
you can't run any new TSM guests, but you can run normal guests. My understanding with the Secure.io stuff, you've got an even smaller chance of being able to recover. Um, and, I, and I think other platforms may even be worse, depending on worse or better. Um, like SMP, you can talk to the PSP more directly without some of the restrictions of KVM. But if your PSP goes down, you are really hosed. Oh yeah, like yeah. If, so if, things like that. If the if the TSM goes down, yeah, you, you, you're super hosed. But I I was missing the detail. Like why? Like like say we we invent this this uh, Linux native communication path. That why, why would that go through? Why would they need to go through KVM? Because because for everything except SNP, the trusted part runs on the core. It does not run on a code processor that you talk to over whatever interface the PSP communicates with the core from. So you are running, your trusted, your TSM, your TDX code is running on the same physical CPU that your host code is running on, that your guest code is running on. Right. That goes through KVM because KVM has the calls into that. You could teach VFIO how to get in there, but then we have to, then we have a different conundrum we are dealing with. Um, ARM is going to be the same way. I'm assuming Cove is the same way. I'm 100% sure on TDX. To do a scene call, it is literally a VM exit. ARM is a realm switch. You have to go down to EL3 and EL2. Right. Already has realms, so they already have like okay. trust zone and the other areas in the processor. And my understanding was that the realm manager was like that and that it didn't rely on KVM to be in, in existence, right? And I guess all I'm asking for, I don't actually care. Like, can can you give the IOMU driver a function call to do bind and unbind? Yes or no? That doesn't require a KVM file descriptor. Right now, oh my gosh. So you've reinvented S390. Wait, 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 like, wait, 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 wait. We, we can't do generic, we lose the ability to do. VM exit hyper calls? You could. You can make the same call blindly to some extent. The thing you would need to know is have some uh, tracking of the state of can I do the same call? We're not doing it. Like, no, no, like, but you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Managing getting getting the CPU in and out of VMX mode is okay. Actually, <laughs> if that part, if for TDX specifically, it's really just post VMX on. That we can shove down into core kernel and get it out of KVM. That solves that particular problem. Like, these are all solvable. Okay. Okay. I, like, we, can, it, we could have a policy of if you want to use secure I.O., you turn VMX on and you leave it on. The only reason we muck around with turning VMX on and off is some you know, misguided security stuff from 15 years ago. I mean, like, yeah, we want to replace that with new misguided security no, stuff. No, like, <laughs> there, people have like these crazy ideas. Oh, if you turn on virtualization, your platform becomes less secure. Like, who in their right mind thinks that that's a problem in a cloud provider that's doing secure I/O? Yeah. Just turn VMX on, and then you can do scene calls somewhat blindly from VFIO, and we're happy. Okay. Well, you may have some issues with. <sighs> You're going to probably run into issues if you need to have something that is tied to the VM because that is a physical address pointer that serves as your handle to communicate, I want to do something with this VM. So yeah, we, are, we don't actually need to bind to the KVM. The Linux model is binding to a KVM. <laughs> Eventually, you know, when you do the bind, you need a KVM FD because in the Linux model, you're binding to a KVM FD that represents some kind of platform object like in arm it's a vm id mm -hmm. and i have no idea what intel's done but you know that's the shared platform object and we have a couple of touch points in the iommu where it needs to know the vm id in arm sense or whatever it is in intel sense especially if we're going to do shared ept tables or any of that other stuff um so that you know there will be a kvm available uh i suppose in in hindsight <laughs> and i guess it could remain available during the unbind it's a little bit more a little bit more sketch, but yeah. Okay. Well, your main concern was like, host should be my mic. Unilaterally. Your your main concern was host should be able to unilaterally take the IOMMU back, right? That that was sort of like the the root concern you had, and so that for you might have to route that through KVM, but you probably know that because when you look at that IOMMU that you want to reclaim, you would have at some point a priori assigned it to the TVM, sure. right? To a to a confidential VM container to manage through the TSM. So you would have interfaced with KVM probably 
uh, there anyway. So okay. as long as you have that context, you can. I, th I think it's a it's a solvable problem. We may not like all aspects of the problem that in the ways that we solve it, but I think for most cases it is solvable. It's just what you're going to have to pass around some information. Okay. Um, but I I'm pretty confident, at least for, I don't know about S&P, but for the other ones, I'm pretty confident you could pass around opaque handles and you could do the teardowns mostly safely without calling. Like your teardown might have to be wrapped with some fault lot. Actually, it's not going to fall. It, it, it'll have to play nice with errors. Like it might be best effort sort of thing. And then you, if you, if something goes wrong, then you go down to like, okay, I can't reclaim that part of the IOMMU. It, just like the, sure. well, just the standard thing. Like if it's, if it can't, yeah. If, like, yeah. if, if it's if, gotten so bad that yeah, like fail, fail if you're trying to acquire a spin lock and you deadlock because something crashed while it's holding a spin lock, it's kind of on the same level of fatality. Um, but I think it's a solvable problem of not having to route things through KVM. Cause I agree that gets messy because you're hoping that KVM is not holding some lock that it held when things went sideways. Okay. So, uh, James, James yeah. told me that we that we have we, we have exhausted the, the time here. I, I I do I do want to uh, thank you thank everybody for the, for the particip participation and the summary I've I've taken away is that I think as as a community we, we can definitely try to to meet at a meet at a course granularity that happens to look very much like TIO um, and and start there and and that if we argue too much in the kernel community and make other other subsystems uh, upset. Greg's going to come in and push us all the way down into EFI, and we don't want. And we'll be we'll be writing EFI IOMU drivers, and I don't think we want to do that. So <laughs> let's <laughs> let's all work together and, and, and keep us and keep us at the at a copacetic level. Yep. Oh, that so maybe, but yeah, maybe, maybe before everybody packs up and leaves. Like for me, like. V1 is, I think, being able to do the info thing. And if the device is already in the bind state, great. Then we do, we do the accept. And and that's V1. And then V2 is we can start to think about what happens if, if it's not already in the bound state. On the guest side, yeah. On the host side, um, uh, what I don't know is is this block here, this the whatever we're doing on the VMM kind of TSM interface. Like I want, ideally this would not be like slash dev slash sev slash dev slash TDX slash dev slash, that we would have a common ABI for whatever user space needs to do to tell KVM or tell, but that, similar to IOMF, IOMF UFD, we would have TSM FD or something like this. That's common. Everybody uses TSM FD and we find a place to stash everybody's specialness. I don't know in Alexi's patches if we if um if there's already this not not common common device like th that's the piece I haven't looked at is I, I would love to have have that ABI defined for V1 too is ESMFD. I think one thing to add to Jason's point is it's not a hard requirement, but if the hardware vendors or the people defining the TSM parts can allow the IOMMU to cleanly tear down with as few assets required as possible, the better. The device goes to error mode. The device is not supposed to send any more traffic to the host. No, but how do we clean up the IMMU? Well, you tear down everything. You're just like, no, no, no we're going to tear down everything. But I think Sean's point is like, in that tear down process, like, please don't require like new resources to tear down or make, yeah. uh, maybe, maybe. Option instead of a scalpel. Yes, yeah. So keep, that you keep, can just pave over. Keep it coarse grain, pave it over, and then and when people say, "Hey, that's too coarse," we're like, "Oh, good." Send us patches. Yeah. Yep. Put down. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So we'll. we'll, we'll so I I think that I think the next level. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I don't know. I'll find a place to post it. But if you're if you're not already, we have a Discord channel where we we chat. It's not very chatty, like. <laughs> Let's let, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. We we, we 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 can switch the matrix, but like I I, I want, uh, this is, the point is, um, if you're not on that, let me know and we'll we'll get you on there. It's it's in it's invite only only to keep 
to keep it sane. Um, but if, if anybody's in there, you can sh freely share the Discord link. We'll get more people on there. Um, yeah. Oh, and 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 so yeah. So so th this LPC was in lieu of our of our monthly call, and we'll we'll do a what's this? December. We'll do we'll do we'll. <laughs> we 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 will we will we will continue our monthly calls and yeah also send me a note if you want to be added added to the well, actually join the discard because that's where we, that's where we do the doodle poll to decide the time for the next call and we can continue the conversation. Thank you so much and let, for letting me run over and thank and uh, have a good rest of your uh, day. Thank you.